you hear a big crack. Once it picks up speed, it starts roaring like a freight train. Traveling up to 80 miles per hour, enveloping any living thing in its path. You've only got about 10 or 15 minutes to live under the snow before you die from breathing your own carbon dioxide. Are we utterly powerless against these forces of nature? Well, yes. We can't escape off the avalanche. There's not much you can do. But with the help of science and avalanche specialists, uh, copy that, thanks. we can put up a pretty good fight. All clear, ready to fire. By detecting and preventing these looming threats, experts help keep everyone, from skiers to commuters, out of an avalanche's grasp. My mother keeps wondering when I'm going to quit digging holes in the snow for a living. But that's how we get our information. Burrowing through the backcountry is just part of a day's work for Bruce Tremper, director of Forest Service Utah Avalanche Center. One of the things that makes avalanches hard to understand is that the weak layers that cause most avalanche accidents don't fall from the sky. They're actually metamorphosed in place within the snowpack. In this case, it's to find inner weakness that Tremper has to dig deep. A lot of people don't realize that snow is a very good insulator. So down underneath the snow on the ground, it's almost always near freezing. And then the snow surface is actually quite cold. And so you have this big difference in temperature from the snow surface down to the ground. When you have that steep temperature gradient, you also have a steep vapor pressure gradient. Water vapor is streaming up through the snow very, very rapidly and forming a different kind of crystal within the snow. These large square faceted crystals bond poorly to one another and create a precarious situation in the pack's layer structure. Too much stress or too much weight collapses the weak layer and it fractures like this and propagates across the entire slope. And this is the slab that slides downhill. To determine degrees of avalanche risk throughout Utah backcountry, Tremper digs snow profiles and performs compression tests almost daily. Nothing there and 10 times articulating from my elbow. Oh, and the whole thing fractured on that layer of weak faceted snow at the bottom. You're using all your science training and all your intuition that you've gained through a lifetime of doing this, knowing which slopes are safe, which ones are dangerous, and then communicating that to the public. Being an avalanche forecaster, you're a natural detective. So you're going out there and trying to figure it all out. But educated sleuthing isn't all it takes. Sometimes averting disaster comes down to combat. Utah Department of Transportation avalanche forecasters Matt McKee and Paul Gersky are breaking out the big guns, or one very big air gun. Meet the Avalancher. It's a pneumatic gun, a lot like a high-powered BB gun. can shoot an explosive load about a mile through the air and detonates on impact with the snow. This BB behemoth is powered by nitrogen, compressed up to 180 pounds per square inch. Firing it toward avalanche-prone zones above the roads is a job perk with purpose. Fire! Observing whether this ballistic stress triggers a slide helps forecasters generate advisories for Utah's drivers and snow enthusiasts. The avalanche danger is more extreme because heavy snow is expected to fall. It's a good thing these experts like to play in the snow. All clear! Or a day on Utah's slopes might be less about fun and more about survival.